Right, okay, thank you for joining The Average Golfer for, uh, this is the first of a little mini series of videos, a little bit different. We're in the nerve center of Gullen Golf Club. I'm here with Stuart Duff, course manager. Yep. And we're gonna do a little bit of a few questions on a fire at Stuart. A lot of experience in this game. How long have you been at, so we'll start off with how long have you been at Gullen Golf, Stuart? My second stint, I've been here now 13 years. 13 years? Yeah, so I was here 17 years originally. Oh right, okay. Um, so I started off here as a seasonal. Right. And then went my way up and got up to deputy course manager, head man and number one, and then moved away to Ireland for four years. I was going to ask you next question, yeah, where did yeah. you go? Was it the Ross's Point. Ross's Point, Kenny's yeah. That's Lago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant track. Yeah, I went there um, not so long ago, yeah. Oh, I did, uh, it's gorgeous, yeah. isn't it? Great yeah. place. Great place. We did a little bit of a trip around uh, Ross's Point and then off it was before the Irish Open, the yeah, Valley Lift up there, yeah. But great track, County oh, Sligo as well. Great isn't area. It? Really good. Uh, I'm going to start off, these are the warm up questions, so we'll go with some, some maybe mundane stuff, but yeah. I'm interested is what time does the day start for a course manager? At this time of year, the boys are starting at 8 o'clock. Right. And just with the light. Yeah. You know, it's, it's getting too dark just now to get out of there. We don't want guys out there with the, the lights on and mowing. Yeah. You can't see nothing. No, no. You just never know what you're going to what you're going to hit. So what? the boys start at 8 o'clock and uh, we are in 15, 20 minutes before that. But in the height of summer in the peak of the sea? High of summer, weekdays we're in at 6. Right. It's the starting time. And weekends we're in at 5. Right. So it's it's not, not too, too bad. Yeah, yeah. No. Get used to it. Yeah. Personal favourite golf course for the most admired in terms of maybe from your perspective as well as a as a when I, when I look manager. at when I look at courses, you know, break up and umpteen different you know, and I look at greens, yes, and look at fairways, tees, all that sort of type thing. But in terms of layout, yeah, I'm probably say Kamishti. Right, okay. It's probably one of the oh, right. toughest. Yeah, yeah. Toughest. You played it? Never played it. No. Walked out umpteen times, but yeah. you know, it's just, I think it's so well thought out, yeah, that right, course, the and there's so many, Mirford up the road is fantastic, right. um, but I like to break things up. Yeah, 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 you know, I, I wonder, did you see it from a different perspective? Yeah, yeah, from you know, I look at layout first, so I would pick a new state, yeah. and if I'm talking greens, composition of greens, I would say Castle Stewart, right. probably the best I've seen, Right. Um, tees, tee levels, count you down. Right. And it was the last one, it was 15 years I was there, they were super flat. Yeah. Um, superb pathways, either Port Rush or Trump, Aberdeen. Right. You know, so I'm Yeah, it's interesting how you fairies, look at it, yeah. Fairways, old course. Right. Just conditioning, so that, that's a way out. Different, like it, interesting. Yeah. On Gullen Golf Club, mm. do you have a favourite sort of place? Is there anywhere you sort of, you, you, you don't have a position where... No, Vantage point. No, it's you know it's obvious the seventh. Yeah, on, on number one. There. But to me, as a golfer, you've never played this. Yeah, this place. You start off in the village and you think, what's all the fuss about? Yeah, you know it's a nice easy par, par four coming up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then tough second. And yeah. You think, Why is this a linked course? Yeah. And then you get up to the third. Yeah, and, it all and then up, you yeah. realise. Yeah. So I reckon the third is probably. I prefer that more than the seventh. Right. For that reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we've just done the same thing. We've drove up into the middle of the, this is sort of plonked in the middle of the course, this yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Greenkeeper's uh, area. Mm. And we've done exactly that. You drive up through those first two holes and then all of a sudden the whole thing. So I've just mm. explained to Lewis, who we've got with us today, mm. it just opens up and it's mm. like, wow, what's going on? I love on? it when you bring people across. Yeah. Like, there was a guy in the village, he's never been across the hill and he's been here 40 years. Right. So <laughs> for the Scottish Open this year, one of the soil patches brought him across. Yeah. And he was just couldn't Blown believe away. it. And yeah, he yeah. stayed here for 40 <laughs> yeah, years. He didn't realise. Right. Uh, so. so, going more now specifically about Gullen itself um, as a golf course, I know that we've got Gullen 1, 2, and 3. Mm. How, how many golfers pass through the three courses? Okay, well, number year? one is around 30,000. Yeah. yeah. Slightly less, I think. Um, number two is about 27. Right. Thousand and number three is about the twenty-four. It's a bit of traffic, isn't it? It's a bit of traffic. I mean, you've got to remember a lot of that traffic's during the winter time. Right. Yeah, you because know, we're generally open most of the time. Yeah, yeah. And we don't really suffer from, you know, surface water lying on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's always open. But so the places in Edinburgh, Mid Lothian, even Glasgow, they're and they're closed. Yeah. Through bad weather, 
Yeah, they're all coming out here. Right. Yeah, number one's obviously hard to get on, but in two and three it can almost be like pay, pay as you play. Yeah, perfect. So we've got a lot, a lot of traffic, of, traffic. traffic during the winter. And how many green staff does it take to sort of facilitate those three courses? Well, we're up to the staff, and there'll be 25 of us. Yeah. Um, and that's broken up into ind individual teams, but part of that 25 is myself and the mechanic. Right. Um, so, yeah, 25 of us. In terms, next question I've got down is, um, do, how much difference does the schedule change between the four seasons from, from a maintenance perspective? Or? <laughs> seasons doesn't really, it's from day to day. Right. You know, you start, even at this time of year, you know, we've got two days of frost. Right. So that puts back yeah, things. And then it's gone mild. Right. So you're changing. Con constantly adapting to the weather. Constantly adapting to the weather. But in terms of, the seasons, you know, we've got the spring, we're waiting on growth. Yeah. And we don't really get growth until, you know, maybe late May. Right. Start of June and then... Temperature-wise being just a yeah, little bit colder, right? Yeah, soil temperatures, air temperatures coming up. Yeah. And then we start getting growth. Um, so we can recover from the winter wear and tear. Yeah. Um, and then we start in the growing season and the growth starts picking up. Okay. So you're banging on, you know, you're getting intensifying your mowing. Um, and another practice like better to cut and stuff, stuff uh, like all that thing it gets a real smoothness on right, the greens. Right. Uh, it's during that time you get you know, you get quite pacey on the greens through autumn, winter time, probably right. winter time we're pacier. Right. And then the growth. Which would be a surprise, wouldn't it, yeah. really for most of us? Yeah, I mean we lose a bit of smoothness, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. getting the growth yeah. during the winter time but the greens are really excellent. Pacey. Excellent right. during the winter time. Right. Um is it, are there any, in terms of location maybe, are there any unique challenges that Gullen faces that may be different to other courses in terms of way position? Uh, I think the wind yeah. is works more very expo exposed. Very exposed, you know, I speak to guys across on pipe and every time they come across they feel it's a lot windier here. Right. The more it's across there, yeah, yeah. they're right on the top of the yes, hill. Yeah. Um, I think that's the wind One of the things. challenges. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the hardest the hardest thing for us. You might be able to pick it up on the microphones, I don't know, but it's certainly a bit of a gust today, isn't it? Yeah, it's average thirty miles an hour wind, so it's Yeah, it's blowing a, a little test. bit a little bit of a breeze. Um I'm always I've I've played here a few times. The the one thing is that the amount of bunkers and then the quality of the condition of the bunkers. The first question is how many bunkers are on the are on the land in terms of the three courses? Painted them all up to be honest with you. I know number or one's about 124. Yeah. So 124 just on number one? Number one. one. Right. Um, and um, how does that maintenance then, I mean, how difficult is it to maintain those? And uh, it's quite difficult. I mean, this year, um, with the amount of play we've had, the dry weather. Yeah, yeah. And um, we've probably more bunkers this year to renovate. Yeah. I think we're up at about 40 odds. Right. Um, and the guys fly through, they do a fantastic yeah, job on and they're really, really pacey what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but we've had more bunkers this year. Right. Uh, each squad yeah. have had more bunkers to do this to do. year. So, so, you know, are they all revetted bunkers? Is it? Is most, most of them, them are, but we do have contoured. And, and how often does that process need to be sort of. I uh, think the. D depends where the bunker's situated. So right <laughs> Difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it depends which way the bunker's facing. Yeah. It depends how much plays on it. You know, right. If it's a okay. south facing bunker, it dries out. Right. You know, you'll see a burnt off face quite yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. And then just have got a bunker at the 13th of number one, par three, it catches a lot. Right. And it's a deep bunker. Yeah. So the face gets battered. That right. has to get done every two years. Right, okay. So the ones that are in a lot of play is every two years. Yeah. Three years for the ones that aren't. It's a lot of work, though. Isn't it? <coughs> it a is. lot of work into yeah. those. Yeah. Um, I've played, like I said, Gulland quite a few times. It's, it's always in, and I'm not. Uh, lots of people will have played it, so it won't be a case of me saying that in front of Stuart. It's always in immaculate condition. Um, from your perspective, can Gulland improve as a golf course, uh, or is it sort of about maintaining that level of excellence? I suppose that you've got at the minute. Well, at the end of the day, I have aspirations to be. And every course manager, every greenkeeper should have these aspirations. You always kick yourself. We see all the faults, and you're right. always going to focus on the faults. You yeah, never yeah, really yeah, yeah. focus on how good everybody's doing. Right, yeah, you're yeah. always, you know, you pinpoint the faults. Yeah, yeah. And that's always in your back of your mind. So I, I look at other courses yeah. and I see what they're doing on a day-to-day -day 
Right. And it's the finer detail. Yes. Yeah. First, you yeah. Know, make sure all the sprinklers are trimmed, pathways are edged. Yeah. The wee things, a good goal for notices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and that's the next step. The up. levels, yeah. You know, so I like to be cutting fairways three times a week instead of twice a week. Right. So get the presentation absolutely yeah, yeah. bang on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I always pushing forward. Yeah, you know, I've been to like Castle Stewart, I've been to um, Canusney, and they're up yeah. at a slightly different level. Right. Uh, in terms of what they can do day to day and yeah. just the overall presentation right. of the course. Okay. Um, we keep everything neat and tidy, yeah. but there's things we, we hide yeah, yeah. and get away with, yeah. which I would like to improve on. Right, okay. Um, but we in general, presentation is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's still another level to oh, go right. up to. So. And I think that's the, I mean, from my perspective, I, I, it's a difficult one because, like you said, it seems absolutely, like you said, maybe a few bits are in them because yeah. it looks pristine, doesn't it, to be fair? Well, at the end of the day, we put a lot of effort into presentation. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of folk think a links course, you, you don't have to because it's not all striped and yeah, angled yeah. stripes. Yeah. And, no, that's um, right. Yeah, so we do try, but we always want to do better. Right. Next question is, is about the Scottish Open because mm -hmm. um, both in 2015 and 2018 mm -hmm. at the Scottish Open at Gullen, which must have been uh, a real proud moment, was it? Yeah, oh, to have the, that, the, the competition. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. we never ever think Gullen would get such a, a prestigious com uh, competition. Yeah, and it was absolutely fantastic. Having yeah, the yeah. First time yeah, and even better the second. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, that must have been again a big compliment for it to come back as well. Oh, it's so, probably, I mean, you know, it's obviously they knew it went well. Yeah, yeah. And it was well received with the players. Yeah. So that's, it's a pat in the back for the course. Yes, it is, yeah, yeah. And obviously what we're doing yeah, yeah. as a club. Yeah, that's fantastic. So it's, you know, the club have done quite a few changes to holes. Yeah. And, you know, that, that takes a lot of, a lot of guts to do to change a course. Yeah. But it's all to benefit the golfers and it's, it's attracting better competitions. Obviously, the Scottish Open. Yeah, and and how how did preparing the Scottish the course for the Scottish Open? How did it, how does that differ from the kind of uh, getting ready for a, a, a monthly medal on a Saturday? Basically, you don't have that luxury for the monthly medal. You know, you've got to do your double cut and maybe triple cut, and you you come in in the evening time right. to cut greens. Right. You know what you're trying to do? You're getting them smooth. You're working on the smoothness and density, and then you're after getting closer to competition one two weeks out you're working on the top growth right so you've got the smoothness and density and then then you'll start working on the, the speed right the speed of them so you try to take the growth off them okay so you've got minimum amount of growth during the competition right but monthly medal you don't have that that's luxury. a luxury because yeah. you don't you know it's a cost the overtime of course yeah yeah you know and it's of course the additional staff you don't have no. that luxury. so it's just that extra sort of yeah you know it's unfortunately golfers see why can't the greens be running <laughs> yeah. how they are like with the Scottish Open yeah. ten and a half feet whatever they were um, because that takes a lot yeah, of a lot, yeah. I was going to ask that question is what, yeah. do the, what do the greens run at for so ten and a half no, the, that's, that's a target speed ten and a half and right. if it's windy yeah, in fact and you're told not to cut them right yeah, yeah. you know because it, 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 it could be embarrassing silly, yeah. you know if a ball moves on yeah, the green yeah. it's competition stop for the day yeah. and they just cannot afford okay. that okay as a greenkeeper, that's you know you want your greens as quick and as smooth yeah, as possible. Yeah, so it's a bit of a. Um, but that's with the strength of the the, sorry, the the people that run the competition. Yeah. They know yeah, the they speeds and they know yeah. the parameters. Yeah. So that's where you've got to listen to them. So what would and again in comparison, what does what do the greens run at through the year? It's I would gone. say during the winter time, we're probably about nine. Still, yeah. Yeah, and quicker. Yeah. And then average during. Summertime, full growth eight and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. Um, last question, really, mm. is from the two events, 2015 and 2018. Are there any particular highlights from those that you can recall? Obviously, you had a lot of top names and stars here yeah, playing yeah, the course. The first one is just seeing um, what's the chap's name now? Ricky Fowler. Yes. You know, that shot into 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that. Not forgetting that one. Yes. The only thing I really, really <laughs> remember from the from the first one, and then pictures of a guy playing off the the pathway on the championship first, yeah, and the pathway going up to the championship second, so yeah, our second going up to the third, and it just shows these guys can hit bad shots, yeah, yeah. You know, he's playing off a pathway, stuff you see members doing, yeah, yeah, day encouraging, day. yeah. It's great to see the pro it does happen to the pros as well. So that was the first one, and the second one is probably Brandon Stone's chance. Right. At 18, yeah. Sure, 59. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, it was just a moment, in, yeah. I mean, two minds, just like, right, one that going in for him, yeah. But you're thinking, the course, yeah, don't be the first one, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that, that's my most memorable, memorable oh, yeah, one with okay. the, the second comp, but obviously. I would imagine pretty much the highlight in career wise those two events being around. Yeah, I think to have a chance to especially the second Scottish Open seeing everything burnt out. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't ask for any yeah, yeah, better. Perfect. Um, we just, just loved that. Good, good stuff. Fantastic. Well, thank you for no being the first one on this uh, little mini series. Anyway, it's uh, I, I really enjoyed that mm -hmm. uh, chat and I hope you did too. Um, as ever, thank you for watching. Stick uh, some comments down below, do my very best to uh, answer on those. And uh, I'm gonna, well, I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna go out and play <laughs> Good luck. 18 holes or not, because like I said, then 30 mile an hour gusts seem uh, it's a bit of a breeze, isn't it? We'll see how we get on. But anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you to Stuart, no and uh, I'll see you all soon.